Howdy y'all, Fuzzy Biker here. We are at Baxter Cycle in Marnie, Iowa, and look what we've got today. This is a Royal Enfield Meteor 350. Not to be confused with the classic 350, it's a little different. It's got a lower seat height, to be the, one of the big things right away, about an inch and a half lower. And uh, it's got a bit of a shorter wheelbase. Also, it isn't quite as chromed up as the uh, classic that we reviewed. This is the bottom level of uh, of the meteor. I think that's called the uh, fireball, fireball yellow. Got these uh, nifty yellow stripes on the wheels. It's got the mags that are not milled. Supernova has milled mags. Um, but look at that, all blacked out, blacked out engine, blacked out pipe. Just kind of a gorgeous thing, you know, blacked out handlebars blacked out mirrors, a little bit of chrome, we got chrome on the shock absorbers right here on the fuel cap, right here in the front of the gauges and on the headlight rim. Kind of a nifty little thing. So let's start with the engine. It's got a uh, single cylinder, two valve, fuel injected, 349 cc engine that produces about uh, 20 horsepower and about 20 foot-pounds of torque and it runs it all through a five-speed manual gearbox. And what's kind of cool about that is it has a heel shifter and uh, I learned how to ride on heel shifters but uh, most modern motorcycles don't have those anymore so I have to actually for my, force myself to use them when I get on this bike and I always enjoy it. You don't have to hook your toe underneath anymore. You know, I, Of course I have motorcycle boots but if you had nice shoes you wouldn't have to worry about scuffing them. Real pretty though isn't it? It's got these milled ends on the engine here. Very well done, I think. Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, other differences between this and the Classic, I think it has a slightly smaller gas tank. And um, of course I talked about the seat height already and a shorter, little bit shorter wheelbase. I think the suspension, we were a 41 millimeter tubes with uh, about five inches of travel on the front and about three on the back. The uh, disc brakes are a 270 millimeter disc on the back. And I think the front is a 300 millimeter. Yes, front front is a 300 millimeter. Vibri, twin pot, anti-lock brake on the front and on the rear. The rear has a Vibri single pot. And of course, chain drive. I would say this is the more modern looking between the classic and the uh, meteor, you know, this design. These are also supposed to be a bit lighter. Look at that. Very good ground clearance. That's a, you know that's a trait of it seems like all Royal Enfields have great ground, great ground clearance. I like it. Uh, other things that are different is the fenders made out of plastic on these. There isn't quite as much metal. A lot more, uh, like I said, a lot more modern looking. Of course. I always love the kickstands on these, and of course the uh, Royal Enfields, almost all of them come with a center stand, which they should. Just a gorgeous little machine. Uh, something to note real quick here. These are not painted on. These are actually raised letters. If you get a chance to come down here and look at the one, check that out. It's got this neat, simple dash. Speedometer. Fuel gauge. Trip meter gear indicator. Real big deal. It's got a gear indicator and I like that. I've never had a motorcycle. I've only had a couple of motorcycles with gear indicators and I just love them. Uh, over here we have a trip, day trip nav thing which uh, I've got to use one of those yet. I've got to give one of those a try. Okay, the grips. We've got these Amal looking grips. They're wider in the middle. They're kind of a throwback looking grip. Um, pass, flash to pass. Low beam, high beam. Information button on this side. Blinkers over here and down here the horn. <coughs> Nifty, huh? On this side, it's the kill switch, run, and start switch. And uh, these are the hazard lights here. The neat little mirrors. I think it's well, really well done, you know. Uh, another thing, I know, uh, my Himalayan does not have this. This is the upper clutch control adjustment. My Himalayan has it down here, but it does not have it on the top like this does, and I wish it did. Just another level of uh, adjustment that you, you, know, you can utilize without getting wrenches out. I mean, look at that, isn't that just kind of nifty? 
I like the seat on these bikes. These are cast grips here on the ends. They're very solid, very secure feeling. Twin shock on the back, we already talked about that. So something else I always like about these infills is look, look at these gigantic foot pegs, gigantic. Same with the brake lever, just humongous. You know, a little foot protector to keep you off the pipe. Just uh, really well done on their part. And uh, you know, the rear is the same way, you know. Very user friendly, very, uh, you know, a lot of thought into where we connect with the motorcycle when we ride it. You know, the grips, the, the foot pegs, the seat. Very nice bike. I absolutely love these things. I, I rode the Classic uh, here the other day, and uh, it was a very well-mannered bike, and I, I think the same is true about this one. The engine certainly is. The uh, These things have a uh, counter-rotating balancer shaft in here, a rotating balancer shaft. As you speed up, they actually smooth out. The bike kind of has that neat, classic vibrating feel when it's down low. Not a vibrating, but a, you can feel it. And as you give a gas, it actually smooths out. Like I said, it's fuel injected. I think the air filter is underneath here. Just a really neat motorcycle overall. I love the classic looking taillight. It's kind of a mix of classic and modern in a lot of ways. This is about as modern as the Royal Enfield gets. Just a beautifully done machine, I think. I like the uh, headlight design, that little ERE in there. Isn't that kind of cool? I don't know if you all can pick that out. Very neat. Uh, it looks like there's a halo on here too. I wonder how that Oh yeah, there is. Can you all see that? Very nice. Very nice indeed. Blacked out blinkers. Just well done. Well done. Me gusta. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. Look at that thing. Just beautiful. Okay, I'm Fuzzy Biker. That's a Royal Enfield meter. And I'm going to go take it for a ride. Let's go. Wahoo! Gauge on, side stand up, bike's in neutral, clutch in. Those rotary switches are a throwback to the old style, by the way, especially this reddish color. Running just fine. We're going to try to remember to use the heel shifter this time. First gear, isn't that a beautiful bike right there? All right, let's go. I like the forward forward dish controls. They're not forward controls, but they're forward dish. Very smooth, decent power. Mirrors are decent. Let's see what kind of turning around we can do here. Dun, dun, dun. Very, very nice. Oh, yeah, that is excellent. Excellent. Excellent, indeed. Very tight. I love it. I love it. And pick up decent as well I think today we will take a different route just for the heck of it I've ridden this bike before I enjoy this bike and I think it does very well on these back roads one of the questions I keep getting about this motorcycle is could you gravel road with it and I think you could gravel road with it very well um, we're not going to do that today because it's been raining up here And I don't want to make a mess out of this nice shiny motorcycle. <laughs> and there's some gravel. Well, we're not going to do it. But uh, look how easy this thing is to just spin around in its own shadow. Just absolutely easy. Look at those blue flowers. Isn't that? Anyway, gorgeous, gorgeous. I think this is the perfect town bike. Um, perfect garage bike or campground bike for sure. It's starting to sprinkle here, guys. Motorcycles. I think if you needed a good uh, entry-level bike or a good second bike, this would be an excellent choice. This is the Classic. This over the Classic would be the lower seat height, the different wheelbase, uh, although I really can't tell much difference in the handling. And it had, this has a slightly smaller gas tank, but it's very, it's, I think it's like four-tenths of a gallon different. Let's do a little bit of highway. How's that? I love the big wide levers. They got a very beefy feel to them. So the way you sit on the motorcycle is very upright. My back is nearly straight. 
my feet are forward, my heels are, are below my knees, and maybe slightly forward of my knees. My hands, the bars are, uh, I wouldn't say I'm reaching for them, but I feel like my arms are outstretched, but not, not in a bad way. I'm not hunched over at all in any way. Uh, the bite, as far as how it handles, it seems to handle very well. Uh, I do like the seat, speaking of uh, ergonomics. I love a nice wide motorcycle seat, and these, this and the Classic both have very good seats. Let's see about turning around here. Back into fourth. Downshifts are absolutely smooth. The That's one thing I'll say about Royal Enfield. They've done a lot of good work with their transmissions. They are smooth. This clutch is almost has, it's incredibly light, almost too light, but uh, has good feel. But look at that, we, you know, we're right back up the road speed. 55, 60 miles an hour. I think these are supposed to go about 70, so, you know, not too bad. I would not go on the interstate with this. So what about the handling on these bikes? Uh, pushing them around garage, they're a very lightweight motorcycle, 410, 420, with an incredibly low center of gravity, so they push around very easily. They're a small, physically small motorcycle, so that aids that. Uh, driving slow, up to five, 10 miles an hour, whatever, parking lot speeds. They're beautiful, incredibly well behaved, good manners, uh, predictable. Nothing, you know, they, they're very stable motorcycle, I would say, a very stable motorcycle. Uh, picking up speed, 35, 40 around, you know, a little town like that, that's where they start really having fun. I think they're tuned very well for that. And then when you get on these two lane blacktops, well, they do well up to 60, or <laughs> just over 60. I like it. It's smooth. It's not buzzy at all. Not even a little bit. And the ride is relatively decent. Would I take this on the interstate? I don't think I would. Uh, unless I had a couple miles is all, two or three miles, I think I'd stay off the interstate. I just don't think it has the speed for it. We are now returning to the mighty mini tropolis of Marnie, Iowa. Home of Baxter Cycle. If you would like a Royal Infield, new or used, or a Triumph, new or used, please contact Baxter Cycle at BaxterCycle.com. Give them a call on the phone. Come visit their store in Marnie. Let them help you out. Any used British bike they can get. Classic bikes. I got a whole room of classic motorcycles. Look at this thing. Just <laughs> I'm laughing because it's so easy to do. It's just this bike is just incredibly rideable, incredibly friendly. You know, if you want to beat on something, I wouldn't get this. But if you just want a fun all-around bike, this is the one. Anyway, get a hold of Baxter Cycle, tell them Fuzzy Biker sent you. If you're enjoying the video, please hit like, subscribe, share this video. Let me know what you uh, think about it and what more I can do for you all. I'd love to, uh, I love making these videos and I'd like to make more of what you'd like. And now it is time to take her home. Okay, y'all, life is short. Life is good. Get out there and ride. Wahoo!